This video is brought to you by Patreon provider Dan. Ah, this has been a long time coming. A huge thank you again to Patreon provider Dan for sending this in for a review. If you don't know what this is, this is the Gen 3 Razer HD from Vortex. This particular version features the EBR9 reticle in MOA, a 1 to 10 magnification range, and perhaps the brightest illumination of any LPVO I've gotten my hands on. To further showcase that this is a first focal plane scope, we bring it all the way to its maximum magnification here at 10x. There's no real eye box shift from 1 to 10 as long as you are behind it perfectly, which we're going to definitely talk about more later on. And as far as the illumination goes, there are 11 settings. Starting with 1, you can easily see it with the naked eye against the white background. Definitely something to keep in mind with your particular usage out of it. But once we crank it up to 11, it becomes insanely bright. Another thing you're going to notice is that they illuminated the center dot and the segmented circle around it. The reason for this is when they go all the way down to 1x, which I'll showcase throughout this entire video, you don't lose sight of the dot. Considering this is a first focal plane scope, when it goes all the way down to 1x, it would probably get so small you wouldn't even notice the dot, even with illumination on. As you can see, the reticle is lined up very closely to the target. I just did the torque specs for the unity mount, so it might not be 100% perfect, but it's as close as I can get it. Let's give a, a quick twist through the illumination. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and that's ridiculously bright. All right, so without further ado, let's crank this up to about 10 mils or about 35 MOA. It's actually gonna, it should be 36 MOA. As you can see, it seems to track perfect. It's perfectly in line. But I did not doubt that at all. It resets perfectly to zero. Let's crank on this windage. Lawless. And we can still see through the scope completely, and we are ways out of our zero. And of course, it resets to zero perfectly. So far, so good then. And yes, that is true. But there's a lot more to it than what we've only looked at so far. Next, let's put it into a more real-world environment to get a good feel of how this thing is going to perform. Putting the illumination here to maximum, it is clearly as bright as a Gen 2 Razer HD, the P4XI, or the Delta Striker HD. Basically red dot bright. Another excellent thing about the scope is just how little the scope body you can see on the outside. Very reminiscent of the Razer HD Gen 2. However, unlike the Razer HD Gen 2, if you're paying attention to the power lines right now, you will note that at the far extremes, it does warp and bend as to what it is in real life, meaning that this does have some fisheye to it. And yes, it is noticeable when you are behind this thing using it at basically any distance. It's actually fairly frustrating. And it doesn't end there. At least the image through it, however, looks really good at 1x. It's sharp from center to edge and everywhere in between. It's big, it's bright, it's got excellent color representation, and everything just looks like it pops out really well. It definitely lends itself to the HD glass of this thing. With the illumination turned on, I slowly bring it up into this power transformer here at 30 yards. Now, this being a 1 to 10 with a non-side focus, it's to be expected that it is going to become blurry above 6x or so. As I adjust the illumination, you might take notice of another interesting fact about this thing. The center dot and the segmented circle is actually transparent. It's a little interesting, but I think that they went with this this way it wouldn't obscure smaller targets at greater distances. 
at a rough magnification here of 6x, everything though looks absolutely sensational. Anything above that, inside about 60 yards or so, is going to leave a lot to be desired, but that's expected given the magnification range of this thing. Bringing it back to 1x, we focus our attention to the 400 yard brick building. As we increase the magnification ever so slowly here, you will start to notice that at around 8 to 9x, the image becomes a little bit soft. Now, this is partly due to the fact that this is a 10x magnification range. It is massive, and there's only so much that we can expect from this thing. It's either you're going to sacrifice it at 1x or at 10x, because there's only so much that you can really extract from how much glass this thing has inside of it. However, the image is still clearly more than usable, which we'll look at again in a little bit. I think Vortex was really smart when they were developing the scope. They said, we can either have a really good 1x and a eh 10x, or a really good 10x and a eh 1x. I think they decided to sort of balance the difference between the two, which is why at 1x we have a little bit of fisheye, but at 10x we still have a very usable image. I think that was actually a very smart move by Vortex. You know what? Let's talk about the reticle a little bit, because I haven't really talked much about it. I love this thing. Everything from the simple ranging reticle up on top, to the very nice center dot, to all the drops out to about 600 yards with wind calls to up to 20 miles an hour. It's very easy to read, very well laid out. Looking at the 800 yard power tower right there, you can see what I was talking about earlier with that 10x, the image just becomes soft. Plus, you can see some chromatic aberration creeping in at the high contrast areas on the power cables. You ask and you shall receive. Here we are about 7.30 p.m. early September. It is overcast. It is dark. It is the perfect time to see how much light transmission we get through this thing in less than ideal conditions. As I flip through the illumination controls, you can see it is just absolutely sensational. The fact that they illuminated the center dot and the segmented circle around it does appear to be a little bit on the larger side, but it is at least very easy to pick up. As we increase the magnification here, it does get a little bit darker in darker environments. So if you plan on using this thing at a higher magnification range in a very dark environment like this, expect it to be a little bit on the lacking side. Again, that's just mainly down to what we're demanding from the glass being a 1 to 10, and the fact that the, even though this is a 34 millimeter tube, it's still only a 24 millimeter objective. To 1,000 yards in our last long distance of the day. Image looks on par with what we saw earlier. It's okay, not a whole lot to write home about. I'm going to pull back to about 4x and add 36 MOA of adjustment, which will equate to roughly 10 mils of elevation and be consistent with every other scope that I've tested in this fashion. Adding the elevation at around 4x yields no substantial difference, which is very good. Most of the scopes perform this way. But when I increase the magnification all the way to 10x, you will see that the image degrades rather uh, poorly. I have this in a zero cant mount and it is zeroed for 22 at 50 yards, which is really close to about a 223 at the same distance. So keep that in mind when you are buying a mount for this thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, maximum brightness. If you're like me and you like red dots of the two to three MOA variety, this dot's gonna be a little big for you. But at really close ranges at one X, it's going to be the perfect size dot for engaging any sort of targets.
Pew pew, pew pew. The fisheye at really close distance becomes much more apparent and is very noticeable to the eye. Ah, uh, my home away from home, the 50 yard line at my local range. Here at 1x, take note of the black berm all the way in the back. Typically, this will be shifted up and down depending on the LPVO. I've seen some shift as far as three feet and some like this where it's none, despite the fact that there is some fish eyeing going on. So that's a very good performance. Illumination here is on maximum and bringing it slowly up to its maximum magnification all the way here to 10x. It does get a little bit dark, but nothing terrible. It was a little overcast at this time, so not the end of the world. Focusing on the paper targets at 50 yards at 10x, the image looks again, like I said earlier, a little bit on the softer side, but still fairly usable. To show you that one more time, basically as slowly as I can turn the magnification ring, this way you get a little bit better sense of how this thing performs in the in-between magnifications like one and a half, two, two and a half, three. And it's absolutely fantastic between one to basically 10x, with the exception of those little imperfections at the bolt two extremes. Talking about extremes, let's talk about the worst part about this scope, the eye box. And it's here that I find the scope is very lacking. The illumination, as if you go into the shadows, completely disappears. At 1x, it's still not that great, and it only gets worse from there. 4x becomes very tight, one of the tightest 4x's that I've gotten on a scope. And again, it only gets worse from here. From 4x, we're going to increase the magnification to 6x in increments of 2 until we get to its maximum. At 6x, if this is the Razer HD Gen 2, it would be almost as big as it was at 4x, and at 4x, it was almost as big as it was at 2x, and at 2x, it was almost as big as it was at 1x. Here at 6x, it is rather tight and challenging to get behind. At 8x, it's very difficult to get behind. And this is not even the maximum that it goes. Uh, at 10x, it's frankly, as you're about to see, uh, a joke. If you do not have a perfect cheek weld, if you are not behind the scope 100% secured and tight, you are going to have a very difficult time getting behind this thing and looking through it with any sort of ease. As you can see, the illumination, if you go a little bit off to the side, completely disappears. For me, that's just a big no-no. It's great to have illumination that works even when you're not 100% behind it, because with both eyes open, it's at least superimpose the dot close enough to your target. Let's look at it one more time, but with a slightly different twist. All I'm doing is shifting my camera side to side in the mount. It becomes difficult to get behind it in any sort of fashion. I'm going to increase the magnification a little at a time to 2, 4, and 6x. And I'll also tell you a little story here. Every single person that I've given this scope to when mounted on a gun and said, hey, look through this, even at 1x, they found it difficult to find the perfect distance to get behind it to look through it. Shifting it around in the mount, shifting the mount on the gun, different guns, different distances, it was always the same result. I never got the, it's going to sound pretty cheesy, but that warm tingly feeling inside when you get behind something that's so good you can't help but just be overwhelmed by how high quality it is i got that way with a lot of lpvos in the past but with i never got that sense and factoring in the price tag of this thing at two thousand dollars for me that's a really hard pill to swallow i would save this to the end but if you're looking for something like this but want to get a little bit better performance out of it, look at the Trigicon AccuPower 1 to 8 or the Credo 1 to 8 because that's half the price of this with a 1x that was the best I've ever had, an 8x that was extremely usable in just all sort of environments, and it's half price. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, large bore line. Starting at 100 really quickly, I decided let's take a look at a little more interesting of a target. Going to the steel targets of the berm at about 190 to 200 yards where we're currently at due to the slight angle. Illumination here is on full, but I bring it down a little bit so this way we can save a little bit of battery life, shall we? 
I take a few pop shots at it with my 223 just to give you an idea of what you can visually see as far as splash goes at about 200 yards. It's very good. Uh, image here looks perfectly fine. Everything looks very sharp. You can see the mirage in the air very clearly here at 10x. It was a very hot summer day and all is right with the world. From there, I'm going to pan very quickly over to the 200-yard paper targets so you can see what sort of resolution to, you could have with this thing on paper at 200 yards. Now, you're not going to really be able to pick up any small holes, uh, specifically with the contrast of the day with the sunlight being out the way it was, but you can easily make out the rings inside the black. So that is always nice. Moving again onto a more interesting target here at 10x, Steel Gong. I have my friend N shoot it with his 223, again to give you an idea of what you can expect to see with it. 6X. I back the magnification out to 6x, bump 8X. it up to 8, and finish it off at 10x before we look at the 300 yard line. I have a love hate relationship with the scope. Between 50 and 300 yards in these sort of conditions, it performs incredibly, incredibly well. And yeah, above 400, it gets a little soft, and at 1x, it has a little bit of fish eyeing. Okay, I can get past that. The very tight eye box, however, I can't accept. At $2,000, it's a stretch. If this thing was in the $1,400 to $1,500 price point range, I would say sure, I accept that. But I would have rather seen Vortex come up with a 1 to 8 that performed as well as the 1 to 6 for about that price. I think that would have really hit the nail on the head and crushed the market in that segment. But everyone's out for the most, the most, the most. And the 1 to 10 is more than 1 to 8, so thus, the 1 to 10 seems more desirable, but yet it has these shortcomings. I would have gone the other way. Pew pew! Pew pew! Pew pew! Pew pew! Pew!
So there we have it. $2,000 1 to 10 LPVO. I've been waiting a long time for this to come around. And now that I got it in hand and I've had this for a couple weeks and I've played around with it and I've shot with it a lot, I've got a pretty strong opinion on it. As far as the overall build quality goes and the construction and the fit and finish, it is second to none. Vortex has always done a phenomenal job with the Razer HD series. Everything from their Gen 1 to their Gen 2 to now this, the Gen 3. However, when you're dealing with a 10x magnification range like you find here, you're asking a lot out of the internal components. The Gen 2s were 6x magnification ranges, going from 1 to 6, 3 to 18, 4.5 to 27. And all three of those are magnificent. I think with this, Vortex went a little bit far. But that's where the technology is going. That's where all the scope manufacturers are going. They want more, 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 more. The problem is you're going to run into issues. As we've already discussed in this entire video, the 1X is good and the 10X is good. But they're only just good. But the biggest thing for me is just how tight the eye box is. If you are not 100% perfect behind this thing, it is challenging to get behind. Every single person that got behind this, and there's been numerous people, they all say the exact same thing. Wow, that's really tight. And there's a couple things that are really good tight, but not the eye box on your scope. To me, that's the absolute biggest letdown of this. The illumination is fantastic. Again, overall fit and finish, the feel of everything is, is second to none. And yes, if you are perfectly behind it, the glass looks good. But it just doesn't wow me like the 1 to 6 Gen 2 did. Now, yes, I'm sure a lot of you are going to be upset to hear that or even straight up call me wrong. But you're entitled to your opinion just like I am. If I was to spend $2,000 on an LPVO, it wouldn't be this. I would buy two AccuPower 1 to 8s. Because from my findings, everything about that, from the 1X to the 8X, the overall finish, the build quality, everything about that performed as good if not better than this, and for half the price. Granted, I don't know if the Credo is the exact same as the 1 to 8, but is from 8X to 10X really that much of a difference when you're going from 1 all the way out to 8? That's up to you. Nevertheless, I still think that that would be a much better alternative to something like this. Granted, they are not direct competitors. The AccuPower 1 to 8 doesn't have as bright a reticle, has quick adjust turrets, doesn't have the same drop style reticle like this, but it's a better overall package as far as the usability of it. This thing had such great potential, but once you're off that center or you're a little too far back or a little too far forward, you're not looking through this thing easily at all. And isn't the whole point of an LPVO to be really easy and quick to get behind? Especially at 1X or 4X or 2X or 2.5. So take that for what it's worth. I would much rather spend my money elsewhere, but that's just me. But with that, Dan, thank you so much for sending this in for review. It's not as good as I was expecting it to be, and that's a real bummer for me. But maybe this is exactly what you're looking for, and in which case, I hope you enjoy it. Thank you very much for watching, and of course, see you again next time. And a very huge thank you to all of my Patreon providers. Without you, this wouldn't be possible. If you'd like to help support the channel but don't want to join my Patreon, I completely understand. But you can still help support by using my affiliate links in the description below. Thanks again for watching.